I'm Bruce Fumi. Summerled, Lord of the Isles. It's a title that rings through the ages of Scottish history. But if you want to know how a warlord on Scotland's west coast gained a Hebridean island kingdom to become the undisputed Lord of the Isles, then this is the video for you. And if you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then hit the subscribe button at the bottom right and ring the notification bell to find out when I publish new videos. In the meantime, let me tell you an island story. Summerled, a gale with a Norse name. It speaks of the melange that the western islands and coastline of Scotland had become in the 12th century. The ancient Gaul, the islands of the strangers, was a melting pot. This wasn't the glorious, harmonious, multicultural mix that you see in Great Britain today. This was a continual jostling between invaders, the ousted, the subdued, and those who just wanted to get on with it. This is our Tornish Castle. It's on the edge of the Morven Peninsula, where Summerled was based. His family had held territory here for generations before the Vikings came. This is a ruin of a later castle, but from here, Summerled must have watched. If you watch here today, you'll see the Calmac Ferry passing from Oban to the Outer Hebrides. Round the southern end of the peninsula, Loch Linne will take you up to Fort William. Across there is the island of Mull. As well as the sea lanes north to the northern and the outer Hebrides, the other way will take you south to Isla, Jura, Ireland and the Isle of Man. Those Hebridean islands were satellites, semi-autonomous vassals of the Norwegian king. To the west of the Isle of Man were the Dublin Vikings on the mainland of Ireland and on the other side was Fergus of Galloway still an independent kingdom on mainland Scotland. Of course, this was mainland Scotland too. And we can't forget the power of the King of the Scots. It all seems a pretty precarious position for Summerled, perched on the end of this peninsula. On the other hand, it was an opportunity for a heroic character, right in the centre of things, at the crossroads of North European seaways. You see, we're used to travelling by roads, but on a map before roads were built, you can see how this spot, sheltered from the open Atlantic, but with access to its seaways, was the central hub of activity. In the early 1130s, Summerled had recently taken back control of this Morven Peninsula from the Vikings. I tell the story in my video, Who Was the Lord of the Isles? I'll leave a link at the end, or you can come back and watch by clicking the white tab up there. Summerled must have looked across the sound of Mull and thought, ah, tempting. He was becoming a powerful local warlord with a diverse group of adherents, Irish who'd come from his family links in Fermanagh, Dalriad and Scots who'd ousted the Vikings from this peninsula, some Gaul Gale and so forth. He was powerful enough to cross the Sound of Mull and to take the northern part of that island initially and then later expand his influence to the whole of the island. By 1138, he'd gone further and was building the castle of Finlagen on Isla that would become the home of the Lord of the Isles. If you were the King of Man, you'd be pretty nervous about this young summer-led character. You'd have to do something about him. But what to do? I know, get your daughter to marry Summerled. Everybody likes a wedding, and there's nothing like a bit of how's your father for cementing an alliance, eh? Not only that, ten years before, with your first wife gone, you'd married the sister of Fergus of Galloway. You are Olaf, King of Man the top dog at the head of interconnected families and alliances in the Irish Sea out there. So, the hero of our story has married the daughter of the Norse King of Man, Olaf. Now, Olaf's got a son as well, but the son is away in Norway. He's old school. We'll come back to him later. So the Irish Sea is pretty stable. Obviously, Olaf grows older as Summerled grows more powerful. But Summerled doesn't overstretch himself. 
He keeps a practical relationship with the King of Scots too. David I is Normanising Scotland. Summerled, the Gael with the Norse name, probably doesn't like that. What's more, his sister is married to the descendants of the Celtic kings ousted by David's family. And they're always trying to stage a coup and asking Summerled for backup. Jeez, have I not got enough problems of my own? As it is, Summerled keeps in with the King of Scots in spite of his misgivings. And he and his men fight for David when he invades England at the Battle of the Standard. Or maybe there. Come back and watch it later. The point is that Olaf's getting old, but the Irish Sea is calm. Until. Right. There's these three Dublin Viking brothers. They're actually Olaf's nephews. But they're not like Olaf, the mild-mannered old Viking that's now taken to wear knitted cardigans and eating Werther's Originals. No, 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 no. These guys are proper mental Vikings. Berserker, kill now and negotiate with the corpse later Vikings. You know the type. Anyway, they come across from Dublin to see the old bloke and man, and they said, we want half your kingdom. Now, Olaf said, come on now, lads. Sit down, have a cup of tea and a cream scone, and we can talk about it. Well, they weren't here for cream scones, and they murdered Olaf. Now, if you're shocked by this barbarity, you're quite right. I would have gone for the cream scones myself. To be honest, they may still have eaten the cream scones. So let's not prejudge these guys. They might not be complete Philistines. So now, instead of Daddy Olaf, Summerled has got three mental Viking berserkers going rage in the Irish Sea. How's that going to pan out? King Olaf's fiercely Norse son, Godred, came back from Norway with ships and support. He took man, killed his three cousins and became king of Dublin, Man and the Hebrides. Apart from Summerled's bit out there, obviously. But there was a problem. See, Olaf's son wasn't like Daddy Olaf either. He started harassing local chiefs, throwing them off their land and being a general pain in the neck. So some of these chiefs came to Summerled and said, why don't we make your son the king of man? Now remember, Summerled had married Olaf's daughter. So their son was Olaf's grandson. So it wasn't like a coup. It was just like skipping a generation. Now, it might not seem like it, but I always try to tell you stories with a minimum number of names. But I'm going to give you the name of Summerled's laddie. He was called Dougal. Now, the reason I'm giving you his name is so that you'll make the connection that the descendants of this Dougal, the sons of Dougal, are the McDougals. You see? Now, somebody in Canada called McDougal has just wet their pants. It's good this, isn't it? Here's a thing. In the comment section below, why don't you say your name and if you associate with a particular clan? Put the clan first and that way, if the clan's already been named in a previous comment, then when it gets to you, you can just add your name to that one. It'd be really interesting and you can find out people that... It'd be like a family reunion! So, Summerled and these disaffected Manx chiefs are going around Hebridean Islands promoting Dougal as the next King of Man in the Hebrides. Of course, that's a difficult thing to keep quiet. And word gets back to Man, where the current King, Olaf's son, was none too happy. Straight away, he sailed north with a fleet which met Summerleds off the coast of Isla, away out there on the Feast of Epiphany. Now, think about this. Out there... In the Atlantic on the 5th and 6th of January in 1156, whether you're an oarsman or a swordsman, can you imagine a sea battle that lasted through the night in the North Atlantic in open boats at the start of January? Oh! By dawn, nobody had won, but everyone was exhausted. So they decided to split the Hebridean kingdom between them. One cut and the other one chose. But this wasn't a cake that was over and done in five minutes of munching, was it? This 
was an island kingdom that remained indefinitely on the cold shelf, endlessly tempting like the cream scones that had got Olaf killed by his nephews just a few years before. So two years after the Battle of Epiphany, Summerled headed south with a fleet of 53 ships. He met Godred off the Manx coast, routed him at sea and then landed to take over the island as Godred sailed back to Norway. When no retaliation came from Norway, it was clear that Summerled was now truly the Lord of the Isles. Now this is the second of three videos in the life of Summerled. If you haven't already, then I suggest that you click one of the links coming up here to watch one of the others, or in fact, any other of my videos if you fancy. In the meantime, I mean, Dawkins can be a lamb at life. Cheering, Drasta.